Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diane Karanik here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be going over my top 10 favorite PvP specials in Destiny 2. And as always, this is a completely subjective list based on my own opinion and the opinion of my collaborators. Huge shout out to my buddy Zoomzy for providing me with some PvP footage as well as collaboration on the spreadsheets and getting this top 10 for you. So if your gun's not on the top 10, go talk to him, link in the description down below. And of course throughout this video, you'll be seeing a beautiful spreadsheet. Now this is a fully public and open spreadsheet for you to use. I have a bunch of different varieties for PvP, PvE, armors, supers, mods, and all that whatnot. If you wanted to get access to these spreadsheets, all you have to do is head over to my Discord, which is going to be linked in the description down below. And in the Discord, there's going to be a channel called Hashtag D2 Spreadsheets. And you can find a link to all of the spreadsheets as I make them, as well as the fact that the main three are going to be pinned in that channel. And of course, no Diachronic video would be complete without some cute animals near the beginning of my videos. And today, we're going to be having some tigers as these cute animals because they're, you know, not the same, but similar to lions. And I got to just say, Team Titan for guarding games all the way. And the very last thing I wanted to say, and I know I ramble a lot, you just want to get into the video, but the last thing I'll say is videos like this wouldn't be possible if it weren't for my Patreon supporters. If you don't know, I actually make less than half of minimum wage. And without your continued support, as well as more support, I may have to stop making these spreadsheets, stop making these videos, stop streaming, and everything that has to do with Dicron. So if you do like my stuff, please check it out in the description down below. And hey, because you watched this section of the video, I just wanted to mention there's a giveaway going on right now. So if you wanted to get an Astro A40 headset, blue microphone product, or Control Freak's gift card to their store, check the link in the description down below. All right, moving on to the main content of this video, let's go ahead and take a deep dive into these spreadsheets. If you've never seen one of my top 10s before, I don't just go over the top 10 weapons. I tell you about the meta of each type of weapon, and I tell you about why each thing is in the place that they are, talk about the different perks, talk about the different metas as far as all the different things, and I also show you this amazing spreadsheet so you can actually understand what's going on so obviously if you want to know what my top 10 are they're on they're on screen right now it's, it's not a secret it's not gonna be one of those things held in suspense you can obviously go to this spreadsheet yourself and look at these things but the important thing is gonna be the reasons why why is it that trace rifles have no place in the meta why is it that the revoker took the lead over the 90 rpms why is it that the the precision frames are worse than the aggressive frames these reasons why are gonna be important so that you can pick the best weapon understand the meta better and then the fact you don't have to come back to these videos all the time to see all my top 10s although please do because you know that that's how I make a living and again I just wanted to reiterate these spreadsheets are an amazing resource for so many different reasons if you ever drop a weapon that you think is a good weapon and you want to know if you have a good role on it come to this spreadsheet these are all my recommendations if you want to know if I think it's a good role this spreadsheet's your answer and I say this with such energy because I constantly get asked what I think is the best role on Imperial Decree and I'm like, dude, it's right here. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people are feeling called out right now. I apologize. I just I thought it would be a funny joke. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the different things starting at the bottom, the worst kind of weapon types and work our way upwards. At the very bottom, we have the trace rifles. In my opinion, best in class wave splitter because every once in a while you can accidentally get the high powered laser and just shred people. But for the most part, trace rifles are going to be those things that can just be outclassed by a lot of different things. At mid-range, you can be outclassed by fusion rifles, close-range shotguns, long-range sniper rifles. It just feels like they're worse than all of the other options for all of those other ranges. In my opinion, I still feel like they should be a primary ammo weapon and adjust as such. Up next, I wanted to talk about these little spattering of weapons. First up, for the only linear fusion rifle, the Arbalist. It's basically a sniper rifle in a fusion rifle-like form in the special ammo. The issue is that it, you have to charge it up, and then it basically does the same efficacy as a sniper rifle. So you might as well just be using a sniper rifle with a short zoom, which is the best part about it, is it has really good aim assistance, and it's really good at closer range. For the hand cannon, we have Ariana's Val, definitely a weapon that only almost got into the top 10. One of those higher skill ceiling weapons with a good wombo combo, shoot somebody in the head with this thing, follow up with the same shot uh, from the, the same weapon, or move on to a hand cannon, finish off a person with a hand cannon shot. Definitely a lot of good stuff you could do here. However, still in my opinion, I feel honestly like you could just use a sniper rifle in a lot of similar ways. For the grenade launcher, I actually have a number eight position for the mountaintop, definitely above and beyond all of the other grenade launchers in the game for a lot of different reasons. First of all, this thing has spike grenade, 
meaning that it can one shot in the body if you actually hit people in the body with this thing. Secondly, it's micro missile, meaning it fires in a perfect straight line and has massively increased projectile speed, meaning your shot is going to reach the target very quickly. So very similarly to the Ariana's Vow, you use this in a wombo combo kind of format. You jump through the air, moving very quick with your lightweight feet. You fire this weapon and quickly swap to another weapon. So it's very important you have things like quick access sling or having quick draw on your other weapons, stuff like that. But it's definitely somewhat of a kind of gimmick weapon. It can be used in a lot of great scenarios, don't get me wrong. But it's definitely one of those things that can be outclassed with some expert use of a shotgun or a sniper rifle. Moving on to fusion rifles, the first section that we're going to be breaking down the different weapon types. As far as the higher fire rate to lower fire rate in this section, in my opinion, you're going to want the lower fire rate, higher damage, higher range. For the most part, fusion rifles are going to be that easier weapon to use at a longer range than that of shotguns, which are a lot higher paced. This is more of a defensive option. They did nerf fusion rifles this season, or until I put at number one last season, perhaps a little bit too high, but it had some ridiculous ranges on that thing that everybody was just crunching me with it no matter what they were doing. But definitely a weapon type that can lose out two shotguns at close range against a higher skill opponent. As far as the regular fusion rifles go, the Arantil and Wisdom Rebuke fill a lot of the same things that the 860 charge rate have a lot of great perk options under pressure and high impact, threat detector, moving target, rangefinder, tap the trigger. The obvious difference between these two is Arantil can be found in the Menagerie, which if you see the word Menagerie, that means that it's the most available weapon in the entire game, meaning you can very specifically have Arantil drop and very specific specifically drop it with a ranged masterwork every single time, every 20 minutes it takes to finish a Menagerie game. And then there's Wisdom Rebuke from Iron Banner, which is something that takes a lot more effort to get. But generally, these weapons function in similar ways. As for the number six in the countdown, we have Bastion, which I consider to be the best efficacy super killer in the entire game. Literally, any super in the game, regardless of resistance, if you're at the optimal range, Bastion will one burst shot you, and that is something that's very powerful. For a lot of the same reasons I say Ward Cliff is awesome, Bastion is very similar. The fact that you can use it pretty easily, like the fusion rifles, you can use them pretty easily at the mid-range to close range. The fact that it one-shots any super in the game, as long as you're training your target on them. And honestly, the sound also is very, very nice. Getting that nice chung 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 right on the enemy, feels very much like Saint-14 would when he fires it. And a final note on the fusion rifles, Telesto has been nerfed too hard that the impact isn't enough and Yoden becomes predictable. Moving on to the shotguns, we have a lot of different ranked items. And of course, very similarly to the fusion rifles, the lower fire rate, higher damage wins out over the rapid fire frames. Starting over at the rapid fire frames, we have a lot of different options with a lot of great availability. You can see here things like Menagerie, uh, Crucible Drops, Moon Essence, which is pretty good availability as well. And honestly, if you are new to Crucible or you're very shaky with your skills in Crucible, the rapid fire shotguns, in my opinion, are going to be your best option. Now, they don't have as high a skill ceiling as that of the other 55 RPM, the precision frames, these slug shotguns, but they're definitely a lot easier to use because you can miss a shot and then fire the second shot very quickly, or if you're not close enough, follow up with another shot and kill off the enemy that hasn't died to the first shot. They also have a great set of different perks. Obviously, the first two are going to be the same no matter what shotgun you have. The third and fourth column, things like slide shot all across the board, opening shot, snapshot. You also have quick draw here for the Badlanders. Lots of great stuff for a lot of different things. And the focus here for these shotguns are going to be getting the most range that you possibly can. And this goes across all shotguns. More range and sometimes more uh, handling are gonna be the best bets for shotguns. Moving on to the precision frame slug shotguns, we have Blast from her, Gnor's Axe, and the Chaperone. Each one of them is excellent at doing what they do. Blasphemers, pretty decent at availability. Altar of Sorrows on the week that they drop, you can get them pretty consistently and pretty easily. The curated version also being really excellent for this weapon, which is a very common thing to drop. Gnor's Axe being your energy alternative that drops from Iron Banner. And then finally, the Chaperone, being that one where precision kills increase your handling, range, and precision damage. When you get those precision kills, you can get some pretty saucy shots on top of the fact that it's a, an exotic weapon. And exotics generally have a better stat distribution than their legendary counterpart. Now each one of these weapons can be used to great efficacy in a lot of different ways. 
The issue being that it's a high skill ceiling and a high skill requirement. I like to think of the range that these weapons can reach out to very similar to that of the high impact fusion rifle. So once you've done enough fusion rifles and you feel more comfortable with the meta, graduate to the slug shotguns. It's a very similar range engagement, but you can do it a lot faster because you don't have to wait for those charge time, but you do have to go for headshot. After that, we have the precision frame bug shots. We have Dust Rock, Prophet of Doom, and Retold Tail, all excellent shotguns to use in the Crucible. A lot of great availability with Menagerie on Dust Rock Blues, uh, Dreaming City drops from Retold Tail, they drop all the time, and then Garden of Salvation being the worst of the bunch with Prophet of Doom. And all of these shotguns have great perk options. Slide shot, snapshot, rampage is also pretty decent on these things as you start to get kills. Slide shot with quick draw on here, slide shot with opening shot. Lots of great options here. There's no other shotguns in this type of weapon that have slide shot opening shot, which may be the only reason you want a Prophet of Doom. But honestly, Retold Tail is still very effective at doing the same thing with its slide shot quick draw. Now here comes the obvious question, why are the aggressive frames better than the precision frame? Now to explain this, you have to understand the one shot range of a lot of these weapons. Firstly, the precision frames technically have more range than the aggressive frames. But the aggressive frames have a longer one shot range than the precision frames. Now a few seasons back, the precision frames used to be the king of all meta and were just running amok in the cruise because they had a ridiculous one-shot range. And when Bungie moved that in, because the aggressive frames have more damage per pellet, they did a bit more consistent at those ranges for the one-shot capability. And that is why people are using aggressive frames over the precision frames these days. But even then, they function very similarly, and both of these can be absolute riots in the Crucible. And finally, moving on to the specifics of the aggressive frames, we have a lot of great options, Imperial Decree being my favorite, personally, because the fact that it comes from Menagerie, meaning that it's an extremely available weapon, can also be used with the Hard Light, the other number one weapon in the game because it's a kinetic slot option but outside of the hard light honestly i would say mindbender's ambition in totality is probably a better weapon than that of the imperial decree because it's an energy weapon it can be used with spare rations dire promise uh, ace of spades service regime lots of great kinetic options and also on top of that it also has very slightly higher stats in handling instability and just a couple of different things the issue being that it, it comes from the Hall of Lair Nightfall Unique, meaning that you have to wait for Hall of Lair to come around, which it comes around every maybe four weeks or so. You also have to get the boss kill a chance for it to drop, and then you have to farm the boss kill, and then also get the very specific slide shot quick draw that everybody's looking for. So in essence, if you're looking for good shotguns and you're not willing to put in the time, Imperial Decree is gonna be your better option. And lastly, Asher Horizon, which is a Trials of Cyrus, meaning it's pretty difficult to get, but it does have that beautiful quick draw opening shot or slide shot opening shot combo that a lot of people do love. And may I just make another mention that Imperial Decree has some of the best DPS in the game for PvE. Imperial Decree, you're gonna wanna have a lot of versions of it. It's an extremely e effective shotgun no matter what you're doing. And finally, in my opinion, the best type of weapon to use in the Crucible is gonna be the sniper rifles. Now, obviously these shotguns have more of the top 10 placements on the list, but these sniper rifles are just one of those higher skill ceiling, higher efficacy, and with the Revoker, definitely being that it's a kinetic option, it, it, being able to use with, with our light, there's a lot of great options. As far as the distribution, as far as the lower fire rate versus the higher fire rate, honestly, I would say the 90 RPMs are gonna be your best bet because of the best stats in handling, stability, range, good layout of perks, good availability. In my opinion, 90 RPM are gonna be your best option outside of the fact that Revoker has a kind of unfair perk. To kind of touch on the 140 RPM sniper rifles, the reason why they're not being talked about anymore is because they received a pretty heavy nerf. You have to shoot an enemy in the body three times to be able to kill them in the body. They do not one-shot headshot supers anymore, whereas the 90 RPMs, two-shot body shot and one-shot headshot supers, and obviously 72s can do better than that. So in general, 140s just don't have a place anymore. If you can't two-shot body shot, they really have no purpose. The only advantage that they have over the other ones is gonna be the aim assistance. And honestly, with Beloved in the mix, they don't really have that much more aim assistance. They're in the higher 80s, mid 80s, and Beloved, 
at 86 kind of competes. I say kind of, I mean completely competes. As far as the 90 RPMs go, there's a lot of great options for kinetic and energy. In my opinion, the beloved being the best option almost in a category of its own. First of all, like I said, 86 aim assistance as compared to these others, which are in the 70s range. Its availability in Menagerie is literally the best that you can have in the game. It has a pretty good scope on it, meaning it's a, a shorter zoom with barrel perk options. It has things like snapshot moving target, snapshot quick draw no distractions quick draw literally tons of great options literally nothing left to the imagination everything you could possibly want on this sniper rifle is in this sniper rifle for the tranquility a great kinetic option good availability from the, the moon essences meaning you can very specifically select that you want the tranquility to drop from it it has great defensive options like no distractions high impact or no distractions snapshot great things there and of course the eye of soul being harder to get with trials of the cyrus the only weapon though that can have snapshot opening shot which is a great combo for aggressive sniper rifles and then finally fake crash Foul, the only sniper rifle with scope options in this list, meaning that you can very specifically choose a very short scope and of course snapshot moving target which is my favorite for the controller and also on top of that it also has high caliber rounds which is great for crucible no matter what you're doing but sniper rifles less so and finally at number one we have the revoker why is revoker at number one in the game right now firstly its perk is a bit unfair. Being able to miss a shot and have that bullet return your magazine after a short time encourages you to be more aggressive, go for those higher tier gameplay, go more for headshots, which gets you into a better mindset, being able to go for those higher risk, higher reward kind of things, and you just get a shot back if you miss. It's not a big deal. On top of that, it's also got snapshot, which is not listed here, but snapshot being incredibly useful for sniper rifles, and the fact that it's a kinetic, meaning you can use it with hard light, Number one combo right now being Revoker plus Hard Light, a great combo for a lot of different reasons. The only downsides to Revoker is firstly, it's a 72 RPM, generally lower aim assistance for all of the sniper rifles. And the bigger part is the fact that it comes from a ritual quest and it's a, a crucible based ritual quest. So it does take a bit of doing to do and it does take like what? 200 crucible sniper kills which is something that takes a while but it has been out for a number of seasons so a lot of people or a lot more people have it than ever and that's pretty much it that's going to be the end of the top 10 let me know in the comments down below if you need questions any concerns if you had a weapon in there that you feel like should have been in that top 10 please let me know in the comments down below but please tell me why if you don't tell me why i'm not gonna know why but there's so many people in the comments that are like this weapon is better and i'm like what well, why I just told you why 150 RPM hand cannons are the best of the game for the time to kill and all that. Why would a 180 compete, you know? Like, tell me why. It's a very important thing to do. And that's it. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. My name's Vinay Chronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.